Does the credit rally also have scope to go further, Alberto? We think we have a cyclical rebound, but this is within a structural period of slower trending growth. Uh, some economies are close to what you would call Japanification, so an environment where interest rates are stuck at a low level and growth too, with central banks keeping a dovish stance. And we have seen more central banks moving to a dovish stance after the Fed, you know, the uh, European Central Bank, uh, the RBA last night um, changed their forecast on growth. Um, some central banks in emerging markets as well, like the RBI in India uh, and, and, and so on. And so in this environment, uh, credit's a good asset to own. If you think about the last decades in Japan, uh, there were very little defaults. Uh, growth is um, positive. Uh, it's not surprising massively to, to, a, you know, to the positive upside. PMIs are above 50. You can kick the can, credit gives you a good yield, and central banks keep the backdrop for interest rates uh, relatively low. So we think it continues. Credit gives you good yield, but is that globally or are there areas where you find uh, the yield better than others? So some markets have recovered very quickly. Mm. For example, the U.S. high yield market is back to where it was uh, almost, you know, at the beginning of last year. Uh, in Europe, there's more opportunities because investors still fear Europe uh, for a variety of reasons, including the European elections uh, as well as Brexit. Um, and they have shied away from uh, buying back some European bonds. More generally, what we see is that there is a higher risk premium in assets which need to be held for three to six months, like actually cash bonds, compared to derivatives which have moved back uh, very quickly. So we think if you don't have fear of commitment, uh, credit can give you, you know, high single digit yields with a potential for, you know, good amount of capital appreciation uh, in, in Europe and in some emerging markets.